This is one of the most soothing ABBA songs. When I heard this song for the very first time in my life, on that 5th November when the album was released, I was mesmerized just from that first minute instrumental only. Then I was more and more captured with the progress of the song. ABBA's joint vocals, the chord progressions, the atmosphere, and that feeling of drifting away. I like you. This is one of the most unique ABBA songs they have done, and there's a reason for that. It wasn't really intended for ABBA. One last time, let's talk about a new ABBA song. Let's dive into this final track that ends Voyage. I wish someone would write a note to freedom and the sea. When the tracklist for Voyage was first released, some people toyed with the idea if the final song, Ode to Freedom, was perhaps an instrumental piece, like Benny's Intermezzo No. 1, or even more so, Arrival, which was the final song on that album. And indeed, we do get one minute of instrumental only, but then the song really turns into a piece made for vocals. Agneta and Frida sing on this song, Frida seems to be more upfront in the mix, and I'm very sure all four members come together when they sing the song's title line, but let me know what you think about that. I said this is one of the most soothing ABBA songs, and that certainly applies to that soothing vocal performance. And one of my first thoughts was, they sing very deep, and those deep vocals are proof of their remarkable range. But we also get some amazingly high and clear vocals in the background, and again, one of those vocals is Frida in opera style. She used this voice on some of her early recordings, but she also got that opportunity on the Olivia Newton-John TV special in 1978. <laughs> she used that same song one year later to rehearse her vocals right before the start of Ava's Wembley concert, but just 20 years ago, Frida finally recorded an operatic piece together with the Italian opera singer Filippa Giordano. I'm mentioning all of this because, as I said, O to Freedom is one of our most unique songs for me, and it's fitting that Frida finally gets to sing some opera in one of Abba's songs in the background. Then I fear that you would be suspicious of the cause to which I lend my arms. It's elusive and it's hard to hold. It's a fleeting thing that's why there is no hope to freedom truly worth. The blending of Frida's operatic voice together with Agneta's high harmonies is marvelous. And to have all four together on vocals for the title line is equally unique. They really take us somewhere else. But before we explore where this song takes us, let's see where we're coming from. First of all, the context on the album Voyage and within Abba's legacy. With all the uniqueness of Voyage and this song, there are still connections to the past. This is the result of 50 years of experience. So let's see why O2 Freedom feels so important and how they build the tension towards the end. And for that, we first need to take a look at Abba's previous albums, more specifically, the final two songs. On our last episode, my friend Sam and also some of you mentioned the similar rocking vibe between No Doubt About It and Tiger. That song also ends on a feminine note and it leads to the final song, Arrival, which we already mentioned in comparison to O2 Freedom. They both have similar majestic vibes and are poignant closing songs. So the ending of Voyage has a similar structure to the ending of the Arrival album, but we also have similarities within the specific finale of ABBA's three final albums. First of all, there is a connection between Ode to Freedom and The Way Old Friends Do, another one of the few songs on which all four members sing in unison towards the end. It's also about that uncertainty of what tomorrow may bring, and again, it's the closing song of the album. And this time, the final two songs are literally connected with each other. They are linked together by concert applause that fades into Lay All Your Love On Me and connects it with that live performance of The Way Old Friends Do. On The Visitors, they would return to this approach, 
The penultimate track slipping through my fingers hasn't even ended yet and we already hear the ticking of the clock from the closing song like an angel passing through my room. But what is the sound that connects No Doubt About It and Ode to Freedom? There is nothing. That's exactly it. We have silence. But this is not about the fact that there is silence. That's something we virtually have between every track. It is about how that silence is applied. For the flow of an album, space between tracks is very crucial and especially with artists like ABBA, nothing is arbitrary. They know what they're doing when they sequence an album. In this case, that final space is extremely long. It lasts for over five seconds. On each track before, it is no longer than two seconds and the silence between the first two songs on side B is not even one second long. It's the complete opposite. That gives weight to this very final song. Agneta and Frida were just belting out the words this isn't where it ends. When we listened to this album for the first time, we knew this wasn't where it ends. We knew there was one more song to come. It's called Ode to Freedom. What is it like? But it just wouldn't come, and the tension was building with this prolonged silence. So these two final songs are linked together by the abrupt ending of No Doubt About It with its loud vocals and the contrast of complete silence for a while. At the same time, this final track also goes back to the opening song and makes everything come full circle. We will talk more about that later, but one of the connections is the fact that I Still Have Faith in You was built around a piece of music that Benny has written a few years ago for the fantasy film Circle. Ode to Freedom was also written many years ago. So let's take a look where the song is really coming from. Benny said that he had this song for 25 years without knowing what to do with it. He said that it doesn't really sound like, yes, it's ABBA, but now that the opportunity was there, they were trying it out to see what happens. And indeed, they did record several versions of this song until they were satisfied with the final outcome. This is something they would often do in their career. Just for their previous album, they recorded Like an Angel Passing Through My Room over a period of several months, until they got the final version we have on The Visitors. And again, it just so happens to be the final song on that album too. If Benny wrote Ode to Freedom 25 years ago, that would take us to the mid-90s. He was writing the musical Christina von de Gamola with Björn and also music for film and theater. The mood of this song certainly fits to all of these projects. More specifically, the pulsating rhythm of the song reminds me of Benny's piece for the Roy Anderson film Du Levande, and that track is called Pulsation. Benny was recently performing Ode to Freedom on Swedish TV with an orchestra and a choir. It also had some vibes of his song for the Swedish Royal Wedding in 2010 and his wonderful choir album from 2015, Shell Against Teed. And with all of these connections to Benny's music, it couldn't be more Benny if there wasn't some classical influence too. Ode to Freedom uses part of the melody of Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake, more precisely number two of the first act. Rich O'Hanna had the smart observation that it was clever for Benny to draw on the walls from Swan Lake, since Ode to Freedom is basically Abba's swan song. But there's a second classical reference, and it's the mournful three notes that connect the first and second verse, and which also bring the song to an end. This motif is a reference to the Norwegian romantic composer Edvard Grieg, more specifically the movement Death of Orse from his Per Gynt Suite. Graphic Jack made us aware that many even mentioned Edvard Grieg in 2010 during his Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction speech for ABBA. 
You can hear it in the music from Sean Sibelius or Edvard Grieg from Norway. You can see it in the eyes of Greta Garbo. And you can hear it in the voice of Josip Görling. And uh, actually you can hear it in the sound of, of Frida Nagneta on some of our songs too. And with all of these classical influences, matched with Benny's melancholic composition and the majestic orchestration from the Stockholm Concert Orchestra, this final piece on Voyage feels elevated and grand. But what else would make this other song purely other if it wasn't for ambiguity? So it's up to Björn to write lyrics that couldn't be more contrasting to this majestic music, for his words are actually quite simple, and I mean this in the most positive way. Once again, music and lyrics are working together by being somewhat conflicting. Here we have an ode to freedom, which doesn't give us any solution or even any attempt at being such an ode. He writes an ode to freedom without writing one. And so, as my friend Sam said, Björn really puts something indescribable on paper. By that, his simple lyrics are not only conflicting with the majestic music, but the lyrics are ambiguous within themselves, because they are simple, at the same time as they are quite poignant. Björn does something similar on The Visitors with the song I Let the Music Speak, where he puts words to his song that is about the desire to just let the music speak. On a very recent comment, I think Mark Johnson nailed it. The lyrics to Auto Freedom are more about procrastination, confusion and resignation than about anything else. Björn said about the song, The concept of freedom is so intriguing and it's so different for different kinds of people. This song is so majestic. I could never say what my freedom is, because that would be received as, oh, you can say that you are rich, you're famous, dada. This is not my auto freedom. It's about how if I ever wrote one, it would be simple. I don't know what it would be about, but I wish someone would write one. So if you ask me, an auto freedom couldn't be more authentic than to just give in, to surrender at the impossible task of generalizing the concept of freedom. It is different for everybody. By refusing to give one concept or one solution, Björn basically makes it applicable for each and every one. With these lyrics, everybody is able to hear their individual desire. We all wish, in the end, to have an ode to freedom that we all could sing. And ironically, we are all united with this song. So Björn's words truly are, as the lyrics say, not pretentious, but with dignity. Our friend Abba Diego made us aware that the lyric sheet shows a line that is not included in the song. It says, sing an ode to freedom, between the first and second verse. Now, this could either be an unintentional leftover from one of the alternate versions of the song, or it really is a clue to what we just talked about. Sing an ode to freedom. Fill in your own blanks. In the beginning of this episode, I talked about that first listening experience of Voyage. Well, when the song finished, Voyage came to an end, and I was left with an elevated feeling of pure excitement. They have done it once more. And to make everything come full circle, I mentioned it before, this final song also somehow goes back to the album's opening track. Some of you might remember when I was referring to Ode to Freedom on the very first episode of our Voyage series. I Still Have Faith in You is also majestic and full of gorgeous orchestration, but while it does give us hope for this journey, it also raises questions or doubt. Do I have it in me? I believe it is in there. It's that same uncertainty to which we return in the end. If I ever wrote my Ode to Freedom, or I wish someone would write an Ode to Freedom that we all could sing. Incidentally, we talked about the amazing flow of the entire album several times, but have you ever put the album on repeat so that once Ode to Freedom comes to an end, it immediately starts with I still have faith in you again? That flow is impeccable. And it basically leaves us forever trapped in this marvelous loop of Abba's voyage. And if you ever listen to the album in its entirety again, try to observe how every song really is about relationships of one type or another. Kenny White made this fascinating observation a while ago. O to Freedom, he said, is about the relationship with everyone, about the desire for all to be free and in unison, but with that concern about how what we say and do will be perceived by others. Again, a great connection to the first song, which was about being in it together. And so, with Ode to Freedom, Abba bow out. One last time in unison, they slowly float away.
This has been a marvelous journey with all of you, but we do have one important episode to come. This was our look at each and every individual song, track by track, but we need to talk about all of them as an entity, about Voyage as ABBA's latest album. And if you're one of the many new people here, we now have all 10 episodes of our Voyage series available. For now, let me know what you think of O2 Freedom. Alright, until then, hey though!